Let me tell you something about the social engineering of heterosexuality. Pomp and pride aside, men are meticulously trained to be heterosexual. Society is Pavlov, and the shaved, shiny, worthless woman as reward is Pavlov's bell. Let me explain a little bit for those who don't know who Pavlov was. Pavlov was a very famous Russian physiologist, and he rang a bell and then fed dogs some food. He fed dogs some food, then rang a bell. He rang a bell, then fed dogs some food. He fed dogs some food, then rang a bell. Now, when you give a dog food, the dog salivates. It's like, ooh, I'm going to eat. Starts to drool. The dog began to equate the eating with the bell, and so all Pavlov had to do was ring the bell, and the dog would salivate, even without food. So again, society is Pavlov, and the shaved, shiny, worthless woman as reward is Pavlov's bell. So what that means is society is teaching these men very early on to be heterosexual to be attracted to shaved, shiny, worthless women, and to consider them a reward. Now, plenty of people have such an emotional attachment to being accepted that they buy into the socialization also to insist that homosexuality is, you're born with it, plenty of people, that's their cause, and plenty of people will say, no, not homosexuality, we're born heterosexual, and homosexuality is weird. Meanwhile, they were trained, each of them, to be what they are. Heterosexuals are no different. One of the reasons it's so difficult to convince people that heterosexuality is trained is because that would raise the question, why would someone train you to be heterosexual? And then again you would say, well, that hugely bolsters women's value. So reverse engineer this and imagine you're not socialized to be mindlessly heterosexual. Imagine you're not socialized to be mindlessly heterosexual, to be mindlessly attracted like a dog that hears a bell being rung, mindlessly attracted to shiny, shaved, worthless women. Imagine the things that couldn't go on. You couldn't have a woman attacking a man, then when he pushes her back, hey, there's never an excuse to hit a woman. Man, why the fuck you gonna push her, man? Push me, for real! And imagine you're not socialized to be mindlessly heterosexual. To be mindlessly attracted, like a dog that hears a bell being rung. Mindlessly attracted to shiny, shaved, worthless women. Imagine the things that couldn't go on. You couldn't have a woman attacking a man, then when he pushes her back, Hey, there's never an excuse to hit a woman. Like, you like know, your neck. Yeah, <laughs> so if you try it out, you send it for something. <laughs> you know they're strong, you try it so out. Calm down. down. <laughs> Guys, you gotta take it outside. Seriously, Back up. enough. Wait for the smack. I'm not going nowhere. It's over for them. Go ahead, I'm gonna fight you like a nigga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right now. Don't sit over here and move, <laughs> yo. Dave, you're not coming out. I went to Arlington. You're not coming out. You're not coming out. Waiting for my smack. Swear to God, baby. You guys gotta go. Why'd you fight like you're a nigga? Whoa! Hey! 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 Stop, please. Soda, do something. And I'll snap his wife. Let's go. Go ahead. Hey, no. You're not fighting, nigga. Now, that's a motherfucker. Enough. 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 Enough.
imagine you're not socialized to be mindlessly heterosexual, to be mindlessly attracted like a dog that hears a bell being rung, mindlessly attracted to shiny, shaved, worthless women. Imagine the things that couldn't go on. You couldn't have a woman attacking a man, then when he pushes her back, hey, there's never an excuse to hit a woman. You couldn't have a woman attacking a man, then when he pushes her back, hey, there's never an excuse to hit a woman. You couldn't have a woman killing men's children and saying, well, you know, women have a right to choose. But then the women who choose to keep the child and force the man into two decades of servitude, none of that would work. You'd say, what are you, if in a society where you're not socialized to be so foolish as to be mindlessly heterosexual, you would say, wait a minute, why are we doing this again? Well, you know, because women are so special and unique and, and wonderful and beautiful. And then you would right away say, well, wait a minute, if they're so special, unique, wonderful, and beautiful, then why do we need to shave them, shine them, and give them this huge social boost and say things like, never ask a woman her age, how rude. Never ask a woman her weight, how rude. Never look at a woman, how rude. Never comment on a woman's clothes, how rude. If they're really so beautiful, useful, interesting, objectively attractive, we wouldn't need any of these social boosts, but we need them. Plenty of cultures, once they have enough throughout history, once they've had enough population, suddenly heterosexuality wasn't the only thing trumpeted. You're like, you know what's cool? Abortion's cool and homosexuality's cool because it's better for population reduction. And then when you had a culture that needed population, you say, yeah, you know what's terrible? Abortion and homosexuality. Plenty of people can emo feel emotionally connected to these political schemes, but no. You are born gender neutral. Some would phrase it as you're born asexual. Some would say you're born pansexual, accepting any kind of sexual stimulation. Regardless, you're not born homosexual, which is to say, I want to be with people who shave a certain way, have a certain hair length or whatever it is, whatever gender norm defines that gender. I'm homosexual. I want people that are the same gender norm as me or the same shaped genitals. And I reject, see, possibly you're attracted to that. But what gene makes you reject? I reject people that have different genitals, likewise heterosexuals. No, you know, I'm just socialized. I just, I'm, a, I'm a man. W women are beautiful. And by women, I mean women who grow their hair at least to a certain length, who shave certain things, who shine certain things, who meticulously accentuate certain things. You know, that's just, you know, I have a gene that I'm naturally attracted to women as a heterosexual man. No. 
you were trained to go with gender norms of, oh, a man has short hair, a woman has long hair, a man has hair, a woman does not have hair in the right places. These are just gender norms, and they benefit women as a commodity, which of course is no benefit to women themselves. It relegates them as commodities. Now, interestingly, there can be, as Nine Inch Nails says, happiness in slavery. And you find plenty of women that are just a commodity of culture, being happy in their slavery, happy in their shaved, shiny situation. But as some feminist said, I think it was Gloria Steinem, one of the only decent things she said, that a pedestal, which is where we put these shaved, shiny, useless women, a pedestal is as confined a space as any prison. There are plenty of women who don't want this socialization of being shiny, stupid, useless, yet soft. Nevertheless, there are plenty of women who are so connected to this caricature that they're put in a real mental headlock when they want to be the better person and accept homosexuals. I accept the homosexuals and I'm, I'm a better person for it. Meanwhile, they don't realize that um, homophobia and homohatred is the only reason they're, they're given this huge benefit of being, well, you're so open-minded, so, so smart, so useful. We should really listen to shaved, shiny, attractive women's perspective on homosexuality. Meanwhile, typically the kind of homosexuality that these women advocate is the only kind of homosexuality they've been socialized to see, which is the happy, faggoty guy who, he's just one of the girls. He likes to shop and waste money like you. He likes to gossip. Remember, let each gesture tell a little story, the way she does, okay? I'll never be like her. Okay? Well, of course not. She's one of the great artists of all time. But we're not going to honor her by quitting, okay? Now, come on, let's go again. Okay. Five, six, seven, eight. Oops, I did it again. I played with your hearts, got lost in the game. Oh, baby, baby, yes, is totally it. It's so good. I can actually feel the spirit of Brittany in the room. <laughs> and you were not that innocent. Oh, God. Meanwhile, there's a, a, a men's movement of sorts for some men called MIGTO, Men Going Their Own Way. And if these shaved, shiny, protected, thoughtless women recognize that homosexuality, speaking here specifically of male homosexuality, if male homosexuality was anything other than, oh no, they're just fun, flighty, frivolous, liberal-leaning people. That's a homosexual. If they realize that, no, some men, when they choose homosexuality, do so because they're sick of shaved, shiny, useless people and all of the pomp and pride surrounding them. Eventually, when a certain porn um, kingpin that I've acquainted with dies, he'll die soon enough within maybe five, ten years. When he dies, I can give you a lot of my frame of reference for how I'm familiar with all the homosexual choices being made here in San Diego. The, this person is, is, has been doing um, porn, especially gay porn, meaning producing and whatnot, for about five decades. And he's centered here in San Diego and his specialty is in military themed porn especially homosexual military-themed porn. Now, interestingly enough, he's dealt with thousands and thousands of actors, gay men. But, interestingly, this homosexual porn has, as its actors, gay men, bisexual men, straight men, and even some asexual men. But they do it for money. Well, no, no straight man is going to have sex for money. Why not? Uh, women have sex with people for money, uh, prostitutes, we'll say, and women in general all the time for money without any attachment of love and men do it just for the the feeling so how hard would it believe, be to believe that somebody uh, saying speaking of men who are have such low sexual worth that they would work a job they hate just to earn a woman or they would tell a bunch of lies just to get one night with a woman yet they won't get an erection and use it on a guy to get paid money like I say, once this guy dies, I can let loose a whole lot of information. I just don't want to, he's a really nice guy, and I don't want to, um, yeah, it would just make everything more, more complicated for him. Uh, but but um, eventually that will come out, and I can tell you all about his um, 
the conversations I've had with him and, and how much speci- this would relate specific to people choosing homosexuality, especially military men choosing homosexuality, then you can have a frame of reference for where I first heard and then later verified through so much conversation with um, military people and men in general, where I first heard of the, the idea of military men becoming disgusted with women in the military being able to be incompetent and how it just raised them and the, raised the military men to just start thinking, man, I hate women, I can't stand them. And then choosing to be gay, choosing to prefer men because of the ignoble character of women. And then you can deal with, and then I, I dealt with on, um, on a acting level, but then on a, on a production and, and a helping out level with hundreds and then eventually with thousands of men, most of whom just openly talked about their misogynist perspective, their learned hatred of women, and how it contributed to them choosing to be homosexual. As of now, we'll just leave this on the back burner. But as it relates to men being socialized to being homo or heterosexual, this benefits those same women who like to think they have this moral superiority of being more accepting of homosexuals. Meanwhile, you have generally two kinds of women in our culture. Those who are more accepting of homosexuals and those who are decidedly not. Plenty of people like to pretend the second kind don't only exist like crazy people like Sarah Palin, but plenty of women around the world, but we'll say specific in the United States, absolutely abhor homosexuality. Well, they're just, you know, it's a patriarchy that just tells them that. Meanwhile, the women who are for homosexuality, whatever that means, for it, they're socialized to believe their feelings are all that matter, and they think it's nice. They don't realize that men going their own way, MIGTO, or men choosing homosexuality, see, they're socialized to believe, well, men couldn't choose. You know, they're just, boy, they're, I'm just so attractive. That's why I have to shine and shave everything and hide everything and look as not like a man as possible because really there's not much of a difference. Those women that don't recognize that men can choose to completely disown all this social responsibility. There's those women, and they're for homosexuals because they're so open-minded because they want a gay best friend. And then they can go out and shop together and gossip together and flirt with boys together. Oh man, that would be a dream come true. Why can't all men act like gay men? Careful what you wish for. That's the first kind. Then the second kind are the women socialized closer to reality to recognize how much dependence they're put on the existing culture, the, the dependence they're put under a man. Now, the best of feminists, of course, argue for equality and all this and whatnot, and they also argue for women to be more self-sustaining. But until women are more self-sustaining, all these women who reject men going their own way, reject any man who would say, you know what, I'm going to just do men, women would be pretty damn helpless. And so there are those women, oh man, homosexuality, it's so weird, it's so gross, it's so dangerous to your lifestyle as a pampered, protected woman. So both kinds of women typically have nothing to contribute except their feelings and what they feel would be most economically useful for them. But that aside, heterosexuality is not born Homosexuality is not born. I'll tell you more about it and the choices these military men make later on in a couple of years, maybe sooner. But meanwhile, you shouldn't congratulate yourself too much if you've chosen heterosexuality simply because most people will encourage you. And you shouldn't think that you're so forward thinking if you're for homosexuality and for the empty notion that Gays were just born that way. You should recognize, for example, here in the United States, the idea that they're born that way. We've just always thought that, or, or somebody just realized it. No. Back in the past, no one tried to pretend that. They didn't make up a gay gene that you know nothing about, but you're pretending to believe in a gay gene. That way, this is the logic. That way, homosexuality isn't a choice. It's something you're born with. That way, it can be protected by laws because you're helpless against it. Meanwhile, to rise above all that, you say, you know what? I don't need for myself to be helpless to my attraction towards men in order for it to be legitimate. I'm choosing, and this, and see, I'll get more into this some other time. This is the character of hundreds, 
even thousands of military men here in, that, that have come through here in San Diego and worked with this particular porn production company. The mentality is, I'm choosing to be homosexual because these women are tedious. Or choosing to be bisexual because women are too much trouble, so sometimes they'll go here. Or I'm equally attracted to them because I never bought into the socialization of shaved, shiny, and useless as the, the only goal worth going after. More and more you're going to realize, wait a minute, if homosexuality isn't a choice, or if, if homosexuality is a choice, what does that do? How is that inherently destroyed? Now, of course, most people who think it's a choice are just going to wander off and say, oh, well, someone told someone who told someone who wrote a book that, that it wasn't a choice, gay genes, etc. Meanwhile, you don't know. And the fact is, what it would do is this. Homosexuality is a choice. So the only way for it to be legitimate and the only way for you to advocate for gay marriage is to say, hey, you know what? It's not a choice. Regardless, you shouldn't get in the way of gay marriage or you shouldn't get in the way of homosexual relationships because we don't have to be helpless to our genetics in order for something to be legitimate. We can choose things. It doesn't have to be helplessness. Meanwhile, until that happens, we're going to have what so many conservative people just are aghast at and can't understand the mentality of people who would go out of their way to try and be a victim, go out of their way to try and, and prove, for example, that homosexuality isn't a choice. It's because of the tyranny of the system that would say, unless you can prove how you're completely helpless to it, you don't get that option. Meanwhile, if there was just the freedom to be who you chose to be, we wouldn't have to have all these half-thinking, hypocritical, cowardly, homosexual proponents pretending to know about genetics. And of course, we wouldn't have to have so many mindless, socially engineered heterosexuals pretending that people are just born heterosexual.